Uh, this is the first video in a playlist for Bardo and Sherbert. I am reading the book as part of my Baby Rudin project. There are other videos in the channel for this. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to talk about chapters 1 and chapter 2 and the generals, the general things about this book. Uh, so, off the top, one of the, the a couple of things I, I want to say about this book. Number one, number one, is the pages are tall. There's a lot of text per, per page. Uh, if you're taking this book uh, as part, you, reading this book as part of a course, you are and you are. Uh, but if you're planning to read it for self-learning, I would say, I don't want to call it a warning. I just want to say, I have found. Uh, number one, the book is really well written. It's obviously being taught by people who've been doing this for a long time. Uh, the content is tight. It's actually tight. And the pages are long. So give yourself time. When you plan to read this book, it's going to take you a long time. It, I know it's going to take me a long time to read this whole book. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm showing, um, I'm doing for the first video, having read chapters one and two, and that took me a long time. <laughs> yeah, even though I've had, I've read some of this material in Wade uh, and other books, I had never actually sat down and read anything in Bardo and Sherbert. I had only, I've even used the book to show, oh, this is where the theorem is. But now that I've read chapters one and two, it is actually uh, a great read. Uh, it, it's just, it's long. The pages are long. <laughs> and uh, you, you think, oh, this is simple concept. I know what this is. But when you read it, it's like, well, I kind of did. But now, now it's really being done right and so i i love the book uh it definitely is a uh, cover to cover read for sure as part of what i call my baby rudin project but even if i wasn't doing that i would also call it that uh, i especially liked let me see if i can find it i especially liked where was it i don't want to preach too much to waste time as i look for something uh where was it if I don't find it quickly, I will cease and desist on showing you. There's a diagonal argument. Let's see where the diagonal arguments are. Um, yes, right here. And I'm sorry, I went by it multiple times. Uh, the way this is explained is really good. Really good. How uh, they lay out the equations of going through each one of these diagonals to make sure uh, the set is countable. So n by n is, is denumerable or countable, uh, infinitely countable. And so, I'm sorry, countable. What am I talking about? Countably infinite. Ah, there it is. It's there. Yeah, these pages I found were very well done, very interesting to follow, and I learned a lot. So it's a great book. Chapters 1 and 2. Uh, so then, that's my progress. I also went through appendices A and B, uh, which is the case for uh, beginner analysis books <clears throat> to always have something about, hey, by the way, if you haven't taken a, a proofs course or if you're unfamiliar with the terminology, let's, let's give you an appendix where those basics are covered. And they, Bar Bardo and Sherber did that here. Uh, I did not read this in detail because I've already read it in other books. But I just went through it. Okay, fine, I, I read it. But if you've never taken a proofs course and you um, read this uh, book for self-learning, you're probably going to have to read these appendices in detail uh, carefully. So again, the set n by n is denumerable. Then they have a much more detailed proof back here. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Then, uh, in the case of my notebook, and I think I'm gonna keep Rudin because there's some things in here. So, unlike, uh, say, for example, uh, Thompson Bruckner Bruckner, which is the other book that I'll be reading along uh, for their chapter one, the read for Bardo and Sherbert was long long so I, I, it goes from page 46 in this notebook all the way to page 93 
yeah, piece 93. So, yeah, and I, I copied from Hammock, uh, the uh, proofs book that you'll see in my channel elsewhere, this uh, injective, not injective, surjective, not surjective, surjective, where if it's surjective and injective, it is bijective. That's a lot of actives. Um, so I almost want to memorize this diagram because it really helped me. It can get confusing if you, if you, uh, in my case, I'm a visual person, so I really like to, so I just went in and drew it. Inverse functions, mathematical induction. So all these books have a, a subset of all of these principles, and some touch on them, some do not. Uh, I found that Bardo and Sherbert really went over the largest subset of them. Yeah. Finite and infinite sets. Again, back to the uh, diagonal argument. And uh, after I finished chapter one, I went and I read the appendices. And that's where uh, I saw this wonderful detail prove. Yeah. Bernoulli's inequality. <clears throat> The completeness property, uh, uh, suprema and infima. And then uh, the final thing that I wanted to touch upon, and I think that's the reason why I had Bruden up here, is because uh, the, there's a proof in Rudin about um, proving that x, that x squared equals 2. Uh, oh, I, I just I want to go to that, but first I want to mention, this is as far as I got the whole chapter 2, chapter 1, and there's some number theory basics at the back. Uh, but when I started reading, reading it, the way uh, Bardo and Sherbert did um, uh, base 2 expansions of fractions, I found it confusing. I had to like take a step back and go, what, what is being done here? And then I realized, wait a minute, if I can do... Uh, a half, uh, if I can do three quarters, I'll remember how I did it in number theory, and sure enough, I did, so yeah. I, I like the way this is done in Rosen better in a number theory book, but they felt like they wanted to include it here. I mean, I'm sorry, this is the uh, diagonalization argument by Cantor, but this is the number theory content. Then if I go back here to... see, where is it? Yeah. So the theorem is there exists a positive number x such that x squared equals to 2. Uh, this is done in Rudin, but I really like the way Bardo and Sherbert did it. Uh, and I think it's better. There it is. Let me see. Where was it? I'm sorry that I'm paging too much. Uh, I don't like to... Oh, there it is. There it is. So, P squared equals 2 is not uh, satisfied by any rational P. Uh, the way this is done in Rudin, I found very difficult to follow. Whereas the way it is done in Bardo and Sherbert, I found it to be more straightforward. But I think at some point, what I'm going to do is go back and read both again, compare, and I may even do some Python just to step through with a bunch of numbers, because I think that's going to help me understand it better. It so happens this particular proof, uh, and I don't, I, I, I faulted Rudin at one point, but I, I realize now there's more to it. It just requires requires indexing and flipping uh, that is a little confusing.